sins like that. What did he say? He cursed you. He cursed you? All kinds of names. Names I wouldn't even repeat. Terrible fucking filth came out of this guy's mouth. <laughs> what did he look like? Had on a real nice suit, tie, but the driven over the fair mountain park. Oh, it was a real nice spring day today, Philip. Too bad you couldn't go out and enjoy it. So this fellow figures he's going to take a walk in Fair Mount Park. Well, what happened? We had a lot of money. That's why you put up a struggle, I guess. Ella must have had three or four hundred dollars. Where is he? I left him there. Had to cut him. Not bad, just superficial. Warned him. In fact, I said, mister, get me pissed off kicking at me like that. Well, well, did you show him the bruise? I didn't have to show him no bruise. I had to show him my knife. <laughs> I had to cut it. Did he bleed? Only a little. It's amazing how a fellow just uh, quit a struggle after there's a little bit of blood. The paper cup? Uh-huh. Word. What's this dice bench? I don't know. Who 
song, Trace. Do you remember that song? No, Errol. I can't say I do. You're not a dead end kid, are you? A dead end kid? Because if you was a dead end kid, I'd give you everything I had. I swear to God. They give me the very shirt off my back. Well, you don't have to go that far. There are no limits as far as the dead end kids and me are concerned. No key. I love those dead end kids. Well, I ain't no dead end kid. Come downstairs in the middle of the night, ready to 
refrigerator. Germans got right in the kitchen. You break your back if he caught you, break every bone in your body. Yep. He took a took a liking to me the Lord. Filled my plate with meat and potatoes. <laughs> Lucky for me. Orphans are always coughing up blood. Orphans always dropping dead. Terrible mortality rate in an orphanage. Yeah, thank God for those big heap of plates of meat and potatoes. Yeah, thank God for that German son of a <laughs> You know what orphans call out in the middle of the night, Tree? No! Motherless orphans. Middle of the night in Chicago. Orphans on a big hill facing Lake Michigan. Wind comes through there at night making a terrible noise. Wind comes through there at night going. <laughs> <laughs> So, industrialist, mystical. You think so? What can you 
shoes. Genuine alligator. It's got a nice suit. Silk, Philip. I like the way it feels. Genuine silk. Guys, what the fortune?
Mom never would have worn a shoe like that. What was she like, Dream? I don't remember. I was only a kid at the time. You was only a baby. I remember a hand.
in there, staring me in the face, driving me crazy. <coughs> See, mister, if I claim out that window and bring back the shoe, well, you'll keep it to yourself, won't you, mister? You'll keep your mouth shut, won't you? Sofa. Probably reading a Philadelphia 
encouraging squeeze. So why do you walk around with your laces untied? Because I don't know how to lace them. Shoes 
No, I found it under the sofa. Uh, well, this was a Chicago woman. Yeah, she was about so high, light blonde hair, acting in the middle, blue eyes. Does that sound familiar? Yes. Who does it sound like? My mother. Your mother have light blonde hair? Uh-huh. Blue eyes? Yes. Well, how about that? But she was never in Chicago. That uh, doesn't make any difference, Philip. She was born in Dyke, Philadelphia. If you know the type, Philip, you know the individual. Listen, have you, uh, you got a razor? <coughs> Why well, use three? Why if I use it? Where's it at? Upstairs. Can I use it? Well, I don't mind help, but the treat might go. Well, I, I want to be presentable when he comes home. Otherwise, what would he think? Unrecognizable. <laughs> you remind me of a dead end kid, 
Trace, that's why I came home with you, and that's why I'm going to give you everything I've got. I mean that, son. You name it, it's yours. Did you hear that, Trace? Oh, you shut up! That was a lucky thing, me meeting up with you in that downtown Philly bar. The first good thing that's ever happened to me in Philadelphia. What kind of friends do you have? What do you mean? I made some calls. Uh, you got my woman. That's right. I called up some people. Yeah, what'd you say? I told them I had you. Yeah, what'd they say? <laughs> they wouldn't believe me. They thought it was some kind of a joke. They thought you put me up to it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not surprised. I told them I was serious. I said I want ransom. I told them to get it together. A million bucks. They laughed in my face. I said, who the hell are you laughing at? I said, how would you like to receive a finger or two in the mail as proof positive? How would you like to receive his ring finger with the ring still on it? They said they would love to receive it. They said if it was a nice ring, they'd melt it down and get a few bucks out of the open market. Yeah, that sounds like them. Now the guy cursed he cursed you. They hung up on me. You know, I could have told you that treat if you'd asked me. <laughs> told me what? Let's call those fellas up. Who should I call up? Ransom? Yeah. Well, you might try those orphans. They're the only family I've ever had. The only problem is most of them are dead now. GB, polio, hunger, poverty, violence.
bourbon in the wall. How much you got on? Quite a bit, Tree. Access to much more. So what do you say? Is it a deal? No deal. A thousand dollars is my final offer. I don't take orders. Easy to get along with. I kidnapped you. Who's in control here? Well, that depends. I'm in control. This is my house. You're my kidnap victim. Well, I understand that. So don't go offering me anything. Empty out your pockets. Yeah, it's a mistake. That's no mistake. Mistake was offering me a job. Mistake was showing me your money. I'm offering you security for life. I'm offering you a job with a pension plan. I'm not just talking about the money I got on me. What the hell good is that? Don't you want to advance in the world? I'm happy where I am. Empty out your pockets. I can't do that. You can't do that. It's, uh, it's against my principles. I'll cut out your heart, mister. He's not kidding, Hill. Whoa, what are you, on a first name basis? Philip and I have an understanding. He calls me Harold, I call him Philip. <laughs> what? <laughs> you understand me? I had to get me to work in a department store once. Only trouble is, I burned it down. Violent. Damn street. I like it. You don't hand over your money. I'm gonna cut your heart out, I swear to God. That's what he said, Harold. I'll give you money. Trade, I told you that. I'll give you way more money than what I have on me. You work for me. Not interested in anything else but what you got on me. Nobody wants you, mister. You're not gonna do anybody any good. Called up them numbers in your wallet. Nobody's interested in you. I don't want you here. I'm a lone operator. Phillips can tell you strictly on my own. Nobody, I don't take no orders. I'll make you a bet you're gonna work for me. This guy's crazy. You know he's not, Tree. He's well intentioned. You don't hear what I'm saying? You know, I'm gonna take on the two of you, as a matter of fact. I don't intend to leave Philip out of the picture. I'm gonna work out a package deal. <laughs> Hand over your money now! Uh, I'm talking about new clothes, fine food, fancy women. Say, you like cashmere? Well, I like cashmere. Well, I'm talking about only the best. Well, maybe we should do it, Tree. You're not doing nothing. You ain't going nowhere. This guy's dangerous. But an idea's in your head. Don't you think you can go outside like the rest of us? I don't want you dropping dead. Well, I ain't gonna drop dead. Good boy. <laughs> I kidnapped this guy. Seventeen hundred and fifty a week for the two of you for the first six months, and a nice, healthy bonus later on. I'm talking about red-headed women. Red-headed, freckled women, Treat. Philip, you like breasts? Well, I like breasts. <laughs> I got just the girl for you. Well, let's do it, Treat. I'm going to cut this guy's heart out tonight, Treat. A little dead-end kid. My own little dead-end kid is not going to be a dead-end. First thing you do, you kidnap a man. First thing you do, you frisk him. You're an amateur, a rank amateur. I'm not going to hurt you, you understand. I'm just going to hire you. You're violent. I realized that in the bar downtown, and that's why I came with you. I admire violent men. Men all stop at nothing. No limit, men. I'm going to trade you, Mr. Treat. You're going to work for me. In a few weeks, I'll be able to put my life in your hands. Believe that? Yeah, I mean, right down here filled with rain. You can hardly contain yourself, am I right? You just want to get at me. Bullets don't mean a thing to you. Your life doesn't mean a thing to you as long as you can get at me. You're a wild man. Well, I'm going to take you, Mr. Treat. I'm going to make you my very own. <laughs> Number one. 
steel shop gray suit down in the window at Bonwitz? Now I know I got the beige suit from this here baby, plus a few sport jackets and slacks. But there are seven days in the week, Harold. Seven days. Well, on the seventh day we rest. <laughs> oh, I don't mind resting as long as I'm resting in one of these here Pierre Cardin suits. You're developing a sense of style, Pete. Now that's fine. But remember, please, everything in moderation. Well, I don't know much about moderation, Harold. Mm -hmm. I can see that, Tree. So, you pick up my paper? <coughs> sure. Stop out with the out-of-town news thing. I appreciate that, Tree. I have a terrible nostalgia for Chicago. You know, Harold, it's a real pleasure picking up your Chicago Tribune and mixing you with them bourbon and waters, but when are you going to send me out a real assignment? Whenever you're ready. I'm ready, Harold. I've taken good care of you, haven't I? I have no complaints. Nobody's laid a finger on you. <coughs> Nobody. Uh, not even a mosquito bite, am I right? No. What about cold symptoms? Right. Not even a sniffle? Not even a sniffle, Pete, but is that because of you? Damn straight, Harold. No bacteria getting there to foot in the dough while I'm around. One of those guys from Chicago was the boy who cut at your body? I placed myself in between you and that bullet. You're gonna have to move awfully fast to do that tree. Oh, I can move fast, Harold. You do that? Absolutely. You'd sacrifice yourself for me. Whatever it takes. Well, this was amazing, Tree. <laughs> so how about it, Harold? What about a little more responsibility? You send me on an assignment. Here on pins and needles. Ooh, ooh, ah. <laughs> I got my whole new wardrobe selection. There's more to it than that, Tree. Well, what else is there? There's your feelings. What about my feelings? They're still uncontrolled. Who said so? What happened at Rod Nobley the other night? That was a week ago, Harold. I changed it. across the street. Go on. I was standing next to you, minding my own business, waiting for the red light to turn green. I remember. And this big, fat SOB walks up to me and he scuffs my shoe. It was an accident, Treat. Right? It's my brand new alligator shoes, Harold. There's no justice. <laughs> What's that supposed to be? If you're looking for justice, Treat, right? you're living in the wrong century. I don't know if I agree with you there, Harold. You don't mind if we have a slight difference of opinion, do you? Don't mind. Good. Because when we crossed the street, I just happened to stick out my right leg, covered over by my brand new Pierre Cardin trousers. And that SOB just happened to trip over it and fall on his big, fat, ugly face. <laughs> so you see, Harold, every so often, there is justice. So you, uh, you believe in an eye for an eye? Well, I don't know. I got these feelings. Some SOB walks up to me, scuffs my shoe, these feelings, they rise up to me. What am I supposed to do with them? Well, did you ever try counting to ten? Counting to ten? Yeah, you know, one, two, three, four, etc. You must be kidding. Mm. Serious. Gives your emotions time to settle down. It's the first step. Well, I can see if you told me to count to a thousand, or maybe ten thousand, that way the bastard's out of my sight. <laughs> tell me to count to a million and he's out of the damn country. You know what you remind me of, Treat? Fred. He didn't believe in moderation either. Who's Fred? Oh, uh, he was an orphan, just like me. We were newsboys together on the south side of Chicago. Yes, sir. Little motherless newsboy standing out in the cold, yelling, extra, extra, read all about it. <coughs> yes, sir. Little motherless newsboys fighting tooth and nail for each and every one. Oh. That's a free enterprise system, treat. That's capitalism. Yeah, we used to watch the dead end kids every Sunday matinee. Yeah, he died, though. One frigid January day. Ammonia. 
recent wind was coming up the lake. Uh, Chicago Tribune tucked under the front side of my shirt and another one in the back. Now that's an old news poetry. Protection from the elements. Only thing is, on this particular day, Fred sold the Tribune cover in his back. But told me it was crazy. The temperature was dropping rapidly. He turned right around and sold the other one covering his chest. Moderation, drink moderation. Poor motherless newsboy totally exposed on that frigid January day. By the time we got home, he had a hacking cough. Later on, a raging fever, and by the next morning, he was gone. Con? Buried him in the orphan cemetery. Now, I'm giving you boys a lesson in moderation, and also in economics. How far will one man go for financial gain? <clears throat> I wish to God I could get out of this lousy business. I wish to God I could go back to Chicago. Why can't you go back, Harold? Oh, and there's a, a widow lady there, a lovely little widow lady. Have I mentioned her? No. Uh, haven't seen her in years. Been traveling. Detroit, Pittsburgh, Baltimore. Why can't you go back to Chicago, Harold? Well, I, I burned some bridges, Philip. It's a real tragedy. There are a number of men who are looking. Well, I've never been to Chicago. You're missing something. Well, I've never been out of North Philly. Phil, what are you doing with that little Well, I can't get it on my foot, Hill. It won't fit. <coughs> Try this. What's that? Sure. Now, press down.
right now, Bill.
Broad Street bus. Now, why did you do that? You were supposed to take a cab there and back. It's a long story. Treat, I gave you specific instructions. I didn't want anyone following you home. Nobody followed me home, Harold, I swear to God. It just felt real conspicuous being chauffeured around. So I had the cabbie pull over and drop me up. That cab driver was working on a commission, Treat. He took money out of that poor cabbie's mouth. He didn't put him in the mouth of the bus driver. Whose mouth did I put it into? The bus driver works for the Philadelphia Transportation Company. He doesn't give a crap whether the bus was filled or empty. Oh, it was filled, Harold. I've given you a lesson in economic reality, Street. Well, I appreciate that, Harold. Next time, I'll definitely take the yellow. Broad Street bus was a real bitch. Oh, why is that? Well, there was this big black guy in there. Must have been a basketball player. He sits down, but he had his long legs spread out wide. What did you do? He was squeezing the life out of the passengers on either side. To his right is a guy in a business suit, and I don't give a damn about him. To his left is this sweet little old lady all scrunched up. What happened? All along the bus, people scrunched up, people turning all shades of blue, because this black guy, he won't move. Go on. Want to hear the story? I'm very interested in the story. Finally, a little old lady gets up and leaves the bus. Yeah? So I sit at That's a mistake. It's a long ride up, right? Go on. So I'm sitting there, right? And there's no room. I figure maybe if I apply a little leg pressure, he'll ease up. Did he? He doesn't budge, Harold. So I'm going to apply more pressure. I mean, I'm straining. My leg is straining against this guy's huge black leg. What happened? You let on, nothing's happening. I mean, the guy is like the rock in Gibraltar. You're in a situation. I warned you about that. I had no choice. You didn't have to sit out. I thought he would shift over. No, the man isn't going to shift over. Treat. You knew that. Let's lay our cards on the table. In your heart of hearts, you knew there was no way that guy was going to shift over. You're right, Harold. Okay? My heart of hearts, I knew that. And you sit out anyway. Well, he was squeezing the life out all the passengers. Somebody had to. You're talking about justice again. That's So I turn to the guy and I say, guess what's in my right hand? He didn't know how to respond. He thought I was going to say something about his leg. Go on. It's a good story, huh, Harold? Go on, treat. So I said, my right hand is pressed against the pistol, which is aimed directly at your black heart. You said that? I said, I'm going to count to ten, just like you taught me, Harold. <laughs> I said, if you don't close up your legs and give me some breathing space by the time I count to ten, I'm going to press my index finger against the trigger of this semi-automatic pistol, and the bullet is going to explode right through my jacket into your big black eye. This, this is unbelievable. Now I want you to understand something, Harold. I'm not prejudiced. I mean, I would have done the same whether it was a chink or a dego or any other ethnic <laughs> fashion. So what did he do? First, the guy doesn't respond. And then I stopped counting. Just like you said. One, two, three, four. And by the time I got the five, he was out. What would you have done, Treat? You'd reached ten, and he still didn't move. Well, that wasn't the case. Well, I'm discussing a hypothetical situation here. Well, I don't know nothing about them hypothetical situations, Harold. Well, you knew when he sat down it was going to be a case of wills. I knew that. I admitted that, yes. Well, let's take it one step further. You get to ten, he still doesn't budge. What do you do? He doesn't budge. Not an inch. 
want the truth or you want me to be it? Yeah, Harold, I want the truth. I press the truth and I blow his brains all over the Broad Street bus. Boom, boom, boom. Oh! Boom. I see. Found him right. Then what? <laughs> what do you mean, then what? Screaming, what do you do? I didn't think about that. Laura carrying a briefcase full of hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of stocks and bonds. What do you do? I don't know. I suppose I run. I jump off the bus and run down Broad Street. You running down Broad Street covered from head to foot in blood? Well, I, 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 uh, this is terrible. I trusted you, Treat. I relied on you. I'm sorry, Harold. I didn't think. You're not ready for an assignment. You don't know how to control yourself. Give me the gun. I can do it now, Harold. I swear I can. Give me the gun, Treat. I can do it now. I understand the principle. You understand the principle? Yes. Give me another chance. You want another chance? Yes. All right. I'm going to give you another chance. I appreciate this, Harold. You're on the bus again. Philip, you hear the story? Oh, yes. You come on over here. You're gonna play the black man. Oh, Danny, 
tried no, didn't you? <laughs> what are you doing? Give me some encouragement. I don't need no encouragement. Now don't be scared. Son. I'm not your son. I don't need you. Stay away from me. Don't touch me. Don't come near me. Nobody wants to do hard. You know, Harold, I sometimes late at night come downstairs and watch the sun come up over Camaxby. It's quite a trick. Well, it pretty soon it crosses the heavens and, and then night comes. Well, that's one trick Houdini never learned. And when the night comes, something amazing happens, Harold. What is that? You all the street lights. All of Camac Street, they light up. I called Treat's attention to this fact once. I said, look, Treat, isn't it a miracle? Well, first the sun comes up and then it crosses North Philadelphia and disappears. That all the street maps, they all light up. <laughs> what did he say? Well, Treat said, Damn miracle, it's General Electric. <laughs> Don't listen to him, Taylor. It is a miracle. Every one of those street lamps has inside of themselves a small piece of the sun. Well, that's the way I see it, Harold. You're a wise man, Philip. Never doubt your own instincts. Well, I never will, Harold. Good boy.
the corner and... And then he disappeared. <coughs> what do you mean, disappeared? Well, he wasn't there. He didn't disappear, Philip. He was just out of sight. Oh. He just turned the corner. Well, anyways, I haven't seen him. Talking about. He's got certain unanimable 
secret, but you can stand there all day putting nickels and quarters and diamonds. It won't do no good. I should got one of these here, magical coins. The token. Well, if that don't never give me that token, I wouldn't have been able to take that ride. The subway token. Well, I know that. The lousy Philadelphia subway token. Anybody can buy those. Any token. You never told me about them talking boots. You never told me about nothing. I had other things on my mind. I was making us a living. I had the responsibility. You told me I would die if I went outside. Don't you remember what happened when I died? You talk and your throat fall out. You couldn't breathe.
toothpaces. Guess you don't need your big brother treat no more, huh? I'm gonna go wherever I wanna go. Your big brother treat? Who stole so we could have food on the table? Stole the other day the tuna fish sandwiches spread thick with helmets, mayonnaise. When they came for you, your big brother treat stood in the door and blocked the way. Do you remember? I remember. You were crying. You hid in the closet. Yes. They tried to get you, but I stopped it. I beat the man dead. I was only a little boy, but I beat it him. Remember, I remember. They never bothered you again. I took care of you all these years, but you don't need me anymore. Is that right? I'm leaving. Where was he all these years? I was taking care of you, huh? Where was he? German ski one night. Reached right into his pocket. Slow the ski. Never seen nothing like it. Orphans everywhere. Orphans. Running through the streets. Pressing their faces against the window.
just needed. 